There was like a defining moment when I went to the White House, but I had just posted a bikini photo and I was like, oh shit, are they gonna look at my Instagram and think I'm so inappropriate? No matter how successful you are, if you're doing hard things, you're dealing with imposter syndrome. Why? Because you are technically an imposter. Over the course of my life, I started doing one improbable thing after another. What would be better than going to Harvard, being a teacher at Harvard? And I was like, what would it take to be a teacher at Harvard? I'm gonna be a teacher at Harvard. This is, this is my plan. And I pitched them for a year of my life. I created this course. And now, fast forward, it's the number one intensive program at Harvard Business School. I just had Kim Kardashian, who's an incredible entrepreneur, by the way, has created a company $5 billion in value. Wow, you're at Harvard. Harvard is like, holy shit, bucket list, oh my god, crazy. Is it intentional that you're not sharing this version of Kim that is an incredible thought leader and, you know, business leader and founder? How did I get to this place? How did I make this all happen? Like. Are we sure they have the right person? One of the students said, how do you overcome imposter syndrome? So I remember when we were talking on our Zoom, we talked a lot about this issues of even at your level, having to kind of resupply your confidence and self-esteem. They're very interested in those topics. I mean, the top business minds in the country have lectured here, so I can't believe I'm doing this. And I'm really nervous. I just have like legit imposter syndrome. You are an imposter when you're doing hard things. And so it's important that we acknowledge that. We begin to reframe imposter syndrome, not as a sign of defeat. Something that really stuck with me for a really, you know, I guess my whole life is just that I should try to do things that I am scared of and that are outside of my comfort zone because that's the only way I'll ever grow. Right, we raise the stakes of failure and we catastrophize and we get nervous. We all do and insecure about our plan A. I think that a lot, but I never want to not think that. I think it always keeps me going and always keeps me driven and always keeps me humble and in check. When I begin these journeys, I go through my own risk matrix, which consists of four questions you, I ask myself. What's the worst that's going to happen if I don't succeed? What's the likelihood that the worst thing that's going to happen that we've just imagined will materialize? If the worst thing were to happen, what would I do to protect myself? What would I not do to achieve my plan A? What would I have not done to be on Shark Tank? What would I not do to go into Harvard and teach those students and get those little letters saying I was going to drop out of school but for this class, you have given me a total new outlook on my education. I would walk on coals and so would you. When we begin to take on incoming, we can say to ourselves, I already asked myself the hard questions and I can handle whatever comes.